escape the hustle and bustle of the big city for a few days and visit the Darklow, a lively, maritime, sometimes quite windy town in the southern part of County Wicklow. Arglow was one of the biggest parts in Ireland and is still well known for its sea fishing and boat building. It is as well rich in crafts, arts and heritage culture. Arglow at the banks of the river Avoca has a fascinating story to tell. Join me on this journey. My hunt for traditional treasures begins here, at the harbour, the heart of Arklow. Let's see who we meet first. I'm a fisherman in Arklow. I've lived in Arklow all my life. I've fished out of Arklow and I've worked part-time in the UK on small tugs and multi-cats, but all the time at sea. I left school about when I was 14 and at that time you either went fishing or some of my friends went into the shipping. At that time it was exciting, it was brilliant. Then as they say it gets into the blood and you have to be around the sea nearly all the time. Like. Just a few steps away from the docks is another interesting place, the Arklow Sea Scouts. I met Jimmy Myla, one of the founding members. I've been in Sea Scouts since 1972 here in Arklow. Sea Scout works on the, the World Scout principles and our activities are uh, youth development using water activities. A typical Sea Scout activity would be to take the boats up the river with all the camping gear in it, camp overnight, prepare your dinner on the side of the river and then row back down the following day. Art and crafts are two aspects that make every country and even a town unique. Let's see what Aklo has to offer. I'm excited to meet a group of talented people in custom kits, a shop that is specialized in a variety of arts and crafts. We started Custom Kids approximately four years ago, so we have lots of classes going on here. I think there's seven classes each week and they range from tatting, lace making, knitting, crochet and the loom boards. Arts, craft and traditions, whether it is knitting or fishing, would not have survived two centuries without the art of storytelling. I started the House of Stories in Arkle about 12 years ago and it's gone from strength to strength and we do it the last Friday of every month. We have, we have music, we do dancing, we do the whole lot there and everybody enjoys it. Good singer, the bad singer, everybody is the same. So don't be afraid to get up or anything like that, everybody is equal. Right? So you'll hear me later on singing, right? Arco <laughs> has a long tradition with the fishing. When it, since records began, there was a fishing community on the mouth of the river here. And there's always been connection with the sea, with the fishing. There's still a sizable small fleet of fishing boats, fishing out of Arco and Wicklow. The general problem with fisheries in Ireland at the moment is we have the fishing grounds, we have the fish, but we don't have the quota due to the quota system that we signed up to. We started in 1972. When I joined, there were eight members and we met over on the North Quay in 1984. We built this premises and the campsite. I have a big collection at home. Yeah, I've got quite a lot. Today, you would have been fascinated with Moira. She's just turned 14 and she comes to our children's class. She's able to do crochet, knit in, felt in, Absolutely everything. I go on lots of different sites. Ravelry is one of my favourites because it has lots of things mm -hmm. in the same place. And we also have another children's class on Friday, which some of the other girls, Hilary, who was here today, she knit that beautiful jumper. She's only 11 years old. And then we had Hannah, who is a genius at making the loom boards. She makes all the baby blankets and table mats and things like that and she actually sells them at craft fairs. Biddy Riley who is a well well known Arklow lady for teaching lots of different crafts. Robert Hudson he makes the rug plan 
rugs. He's very, very good at that, and he'd love nothing better now than to teach people how to do that. You also do it in complete rows. Um, you don't do a little bit of a row here, a little bit over there, because you'd, you'd never be able to follow it. Rosemary, she is a genius at her lace making and tatting. So it's been with us a long time. It was made in the cork here and it bought 20,000 a year for the famine years. Mm. So it was very much part of our history and our culture and it stopped people having to immigrate. In her little bag she carried all her past and history and her dreams for the future in the land of liberty. I love home. I love tears, I love freedom, I love fears, but it's not the isle I left behind. That I love hunger, I love pain, I you never see again, but the isle of home is always on your mind. The busy farm in rural areas, the neighbours all was helping one another with the hay making, the harvesting. After a hard day's work then, a lot of neighbours would probably go home and do their own few jobs at home and come back. Because there was always lots of leftovers after the dinners and teas during the day. There was always a fiddle or a melodion in every house. There was always someone that could play as well. They'd tell stories and sing songs and tell lies as well, recitations and poetry. You could walk into a pub. An orderly gin and tonic. The barman says, and you got the gin and tonic. Barman says, how would you like in your drink? Olive or twist? <laughs> <laughs> Electricity come on the scene then in the, 19 and in the late 50s. All the visiting and mixing around with neighbours, that all stopped. Then about 1981, I contacted a few of the old surviving musicians and singers around. And invited them home to my house and from there the Ramblin Houses sessions have started. That's 34 years ago. All the millions of people looking in in uh, India and Germany <laughs> and all around the world to fall to road. Do a little thing with the stick here that any name that's on the stick is people has passed away and died and all like that. So we put a name on the stick to keep them part of our house of stories that we never forget them and all like that. And that's the way it works. Well, when the Celtic Tiger, good years in Ireland, we lost a lot of people to good jobs on shore, secure money, better hours. A lot of them didn't come back to the industry. Some were starting to come back. When I started, when I was 14, there was nearly 15 boats could be around about. Out of them 15 boats, uh, top of my hand, there's the two brothers there, us two brothers. There's only about 10 lads still fishing that I remember at that time. There's young chaps that come in potting and they don't like it or they don't stick it out. But as a viable future for a young man, it's a, it's a job I don't think there's a future in it for him, which is very sad and unfortunate. When um, the Free State came along, the scouting moved into the Irish field. We developed our traditions within scouting. We, each country is different in their own right, and we are Irish, and, and very proud of being Irish. And then with the other traditions of the, the maritime and the seafaring traditions, and that's huge in here, where everything is to do with boats, and everything is to do with the maritime language, ports and your starboards and your bows and your stands. It's all to do with maritime language, and that's really where the traditions fit in. There's quite a number of Irish-speaking Sea Scout groups. They've been known as Gasoga, and Gasoga Mara would be Sea Scouts. Pat, who is our local historian, and the famous Art Luganzi, Mari Dempsey was here as well, and Mari is really fighting hard to try and reintroduce the Ganzi knitting. The history of the, the Art Luganzi is just phenomenal. These items of clothing are traditionally associated with fishing communities throughout what was the British Isles. They were a most practical garment. They're really a big stocking with, with arms in them, and they're all knitted like, like stockings on minute needles in a circular form. The loss of life on ships, whether they were commercial or warships, and that was very high. And every week somebody was getting hurt or somebody was getting killed, and they were getting into the water. The woolen jumper 
would, would retain the body. When the tradition came back to seaport towns and was adopted in civilian life by the fishing communities, families very quickly started to evolve their own designs and patterns. Uh, doing things like adjusting the cables and adjusting the designs and that different families were able to work in who was who. It was a kind of a woolly passport. The quota system seems to be geared up for the big companies that have fishing boats. Like Ireland, especially, is all family based. You can probably, every fisherman, you can go back a couple of generations of fishermen. Communities rely on fishing. Arklow is a small fishing community, but other coasts, like the West Coast, it heavily depended on the fishing community. The resources is there if you were allowed to, to, to use the resources for the communities around the coast. With the vessel you buy your diesel off the local diesel man, you buy your food off the local shop. The, if you have any crew, they spend their money and keep their families going. Like It's a way of life, just saying to someone you can't do that job. It's, you're wiping out years and hundreds of years of, of tradition in, in, in communities, and which is the most sad thing. There's a lot of skill sets in, in, in fishing that with the younger generation not going into it, they could be lost forever. Nationally in Ireland there's 43,000 members. That's up, I think, by about 2,000 overall. In Arco, we're at 250 youth members. We're at capacity, we cannot take any more kids. And we've been that way for about four years. The big fear of all these arts and crafts dying out because they're not being taught. Some schools in Arclo now have reintroduced knitting and crochet, which is great, because there's generations of children that haven't learnt it. Well, I'll be doing my best to keep it going by continuing with this shop. It's the largest wool shop in Ireland, and by making sure that I stock all the supplies that are required for the different crafts, and by learning from other people. Always somebody that will pick you up and have the talent to play music or sing a song. That's why I say that the, the wonderful natural talent is there, you know, just to be tapped. It's a part of our culture that won't die. And then the crack horse is wonderful as well. Fishery, the Sea Scouts, crafts and storytellers are carriers of traditions cherished and passed on through generations. It is obvious that the future ahead is not bright for everyone. However, after meeting this committed community of Arklo, I am hopeful that the Irish traditional treasures will be kept alive. Happy!